Ladies and gentlemen, your next performer, you should be in awe of his skill because he won the 2011 Crown of Comedy. Please welcome John Typer. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, hopefully everybody can hear. It's great to be here tonight. Um, like most people here, I've got some pet peeves. Uh, one that's been kind of driving me crazy lately is whenever I go use my Interact card, I never know if I have to swipe the card or if they have to swipe the card. So the other day I go to gas up, sure enough, gas bar attendant looks at me right in the face and goes, oh no, no, I swipe. So what the fuck did you just call me, pal? <laughs> Love messing with people. Another pet peeve, ever find a, what you think is a loose body hair on and you, and you pull on it and it's still attached? That would fucking hurt, man. <laughs> Happened to me the other day. I had no clue my foreskin could stretch sideways. <laughs> anyway, I love North Bay. It's great. I've been coming here on and off since I'm uh, since I'm a kid and from Sudbury originally. And uh, my dad and my uncle used to take me in uh, Calendar Bay ice fishing and uh, play a little hockey out here. Some great hockey tournaments and. Uh, participate in the Sears Festival uh, for theater, but uh, my favorite memory is uh, on the way out of town there's these waterfalls. I don't know if there's a name for the waterfall. Is everybody familiar with the waterfall? Perfect. Didn't know there was a name. But uh, anyway, it was great because I was living in Sudbury, turned 16, got my driver's license, me and my girlfriend get in my parents' car and we just take off for a ride. And then we stop off there for a picnic. She had this whole thing planned, I didn't know. So we get there, it's beautiful waterfalls and the whole thing, and I got the most romantic blowjob of my life. It was romantic. It, uh, romantic. <laughs> I guess I should warn you guys, my set tonight's gonna be exactly like when I'm having sex. I'm gonna give you the best I've got for about 15 minutes. <laughs> And then, even if you're not ready for me to stop, uh, I'm getting off no matter what. <laughs> so I'm single. <laughs> so uh, basically, last time my balls got to slap together, I was uh, scraping the ice off my windshield. <laughs> Reason I'm uh, single is because I caught my girlfriend cheating on me again. Yeah. Bad news is I never cried so much in my life. Good news is as a result, so I'm gonna look like such a total mess when I remote in public. My friends all chipped in and uh, bought me those sham wows, so uh, that was nice of them. By the way, they really work. Uh, I said wow every time. <laughs> slut. <laughs> ah, she was a slut. I loved her, but there were signs. Like when I met her, she used to lug around her dildo on her keychain. That was a sign. Then that company, 1-800-GOT-JUNK. She had a t-shirt, 1-800-GOT-SPUNK. Should've known. Another t-shirt, all good things come to those who fillet. There are signs. She was awesome. She was hairy though, oh my god. She had more hair on her elbows than I have on my chin. She wouldn't let me call her my pet in public. <laughs> too hairy. But that's all over and done with now, and it's too bad. It's frustrating when you have somebody you love, you know, and then you don't. It's frustrating, you know, because I have a lot to, you know, a lot of love to give, you know. It's like uh, down deep inside, I feel like a big love tsunami, but uh, with no beach to pound. So. <laughs> Sometimes it's worse. Sometimes I can feel like a like a great big atomic bomb of love, you know, with uh, with nobody to explode on. So it's not the same. Like they say, there's lots of fish in the sea. And that's true. And when you stop and think about it, uh, twice as many boobies. So that's all right. Skip the uh, manscape joke. <laughs> 
Um, didn't know black was thinning. I uh, went to buy some jeans last week, and uh, the girl helping me out was really cute, and I put on some jeans, and she goes, hey, I really like those uh, jeans on you. She goes, they look good on you, because black is thinning. I'm like, I don't want to hear that, but uh, wasn't aware. She says, yeah, yeah, black is thinning. Anything you wear is thinning. I said, really? I didn't know that. So I got home, and I uh, dyed my pubic hair blonde. <laughs> It's all good now. <laughs> a little bit about me, I'm a pathological liar, officially. Uh, it's true, everything I say, absolutely everything that comes out of my mouth is a lie. Well, that's not true. <laughs> and sometimes, when I'm not doing comedy, and when I feel like it, I do uh, motivational speaking. Gone. <laughs> anyway, um, everybody having a good day today? Woo! Right on. This is a true story. I left Gatineau this morning by Arn Pryor at a flat tire, by Deep Rivers at a rock in my windshield. <laughs> and then to boot, I came to visit my grandmother and I walked in on her while she was changing. So, <laughs> yeah, I was there. I was there. She's wearing a bra, thank God. Wasn't wearing any panties though. It wasn't as bad as I thought because, thank goodness, her gut hangs below her poon, so. No harm, no foul. I love my grandmother, she's a lot of fun. Uh, she's always saying things, you know, she makes me laugh. Today she says, you know what, Jan? She goes, I think God hates me. I said, I think God hates you? Why would you say that? She says, well, I just came back from the doctor's office today and he showed me the results of the x-rays and uh, it turns out I have stage 3 deterioration of the vertebrae in my neck. I'm like, yeah, well, that's not good news, but uh, why would you say God hates you? She goes, well, I think he's just trying to punish me because of my passion for oral sex. So... <laughs> uh, 47 and... Uh, Give that to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to be on Dragon's Den in a week. That's going to be fun. I uh, got a patent pending on the flavor of clit. So, people with Skittles are excited. Please. <laughs> so, uh, my favorite color is Labia Pink. It's true, uh, every time you see that color up close, a uh, big smile on my face. <laughs> makes my balls tickle, makes my penis blush. And sometimes you can get goosebumps, but enough about me. <laughs> so we finally got a new family doctor, when I went to see him for the first time, he said, cough. I said, what? He said, cough. And so first of all, that's pronounced cock. <laughs> Can't touch your pal. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I just want to touch your balls. I'm like, well, let's get to want things, doc. But like the dolphins say, eh, eh. Not happening. He's like, listen, I need to check you for a possible hernia or testicular cancer, or maybe even cancer of the penis. I'm like, did you say cancer of the penis? He's like, yeah. I'm like, wow, it's terrible. I had no idea you get cancer of the penis. But at least their ad campaign makes a hell of a lot more sense now. Well, you know, one cancer can be beaten. So, <laughs> so I'm 47, I don't have any kids, not even one accident. Believe me, that's no accident. But still, I love kids and I thought I'd try my hand at daycare. So what I decided to do is to specialize and work with parents whose children are, uh, how can I put it, little fuckers. <laughs> So what I do is I teach parents how to inflict corporal punishment on children in a non-traceable manner type business. I call it touching moments. Now the whole key to what I do is I make everything look like an accident, right? So I develop these specialized techniques such as the uh, be careful throat chop, right? So you want to use that when you got a house full of kids running around out of control and they just won't stop running and won't listen. You pretend to give a shit, that matters. You go, hey guys. Hey guys, stop running. Someone's gonna get hurt. Hey, Billy, be careful! <laughs> Chop him in the throat. <laughs> no more running in the house. 
We got another technique called like, it's okay, come here, let me hold your shoulder toss. Right? So what you want to do is try to get Billy's confidence back and you go, it's okay, come on, it's alright, it's okay. And when he runs up, you scoop him and toss him over your shoulder. You never see that coming. It's awesome. To Billy go boom. Okay? To Billy go boom. No, can't fall asleep, Billy. Parents won't be here for another four hours, pal. Another uh, thing that's popular with parents, I teach them is how to reduce the amount of oxygen in their child's room. That's a fact. It's kind of safe. Sign a waiver. Um, decided to do something to uh, try to make the world a better place, you know? I heard people talking once at Tim Hortons, and everybody was talking, and they were saying how, you know, nobody gives a fuck anymore. And I thought, you know what, that'd be a great idea for a charity. You know? Every time you, you give a buck, make the world a better place. So uh, I decided to hold some events, and I've had three that are going not too bad. I had, uh... I had, uh... <laughs> Something for Greenpeace. Get a piece for Greenpeace. That was the first one. And then I had uh, Pumping for Haiti. That was fun. That was popular. And then uh, the last one was really popular with ladies. It was uh, cervical tapping for uterus cancer. So I was touched a lot of women down deep inside. So I met a woman, uh, seven months pregnant, she uh, had three daughters and seven months pregnant was a boy and uh, on her third date she said uh, she'd like to have sex. And I'm like, really? I don't know, I'm not too comfortable with that. She's like, well, it can't hurt the baby. I'm like, well, I know that, but she's like, well, there's other things we can do. I'm like, okay, agreed, like breathing makes me horny, so what else can we do? <laughs> So I'm like, well, your boob your boob vagina looks fantastic right now. You know, it looks great, and it's okay. So I started humping the boob vagina, and it felt so good to me that I started to moan and whine. So what I didn't know is that my whining would cause her to start lactating, and for some reason it wouldn't stop me from ejaculating. What a mess! What a mess! <laughs> So I went to a party in um, River Valley and uh, met this beautiful woman and after a few tequilas we started making out behind the barn. When to my surprise she said, uh, can I just do some oral? I'm like, is in like getting a Hummer oral? She's like, yeah, but I can do much better than that. I'm like, really? Better than a Hummer? That's kind of fascinating. What can you do? She says, well, you wouldn't know this right now, but standing or kneeling before you just happens to be the 2010 Greater Landart, uh, Greater Nipissing, Lake Nipissing and Area, Blue Ribbon Champion Yodler. Sorry man, if you follow that, good for you. <laughs> well guys, if you never got a Yodler, way better than a Hummer, man. And <laughs> it tickles, it tickles. <laughs> Actually it looks kind of funny too. It's uh, kind of hard not to laugh when you look down, it looks exactly like you're feeding a pelican. <laughs> anyway, that's my time, thank you very much.